Welcome back, everybody. It's Granny of Mop Pop Sports, and I am officially about a month or so into my full time gig as a sports card seller, uh, reseller, seller, whatever you want to call it. And today, I just want to talk about what I guess I feel transpired over the weekend. Uh, this is the one thing that if, if you're looking to sell sports cards, especially if you're like, if you got a big store on eBay or you're grown to be a big store on eBay or you're just listing a lot, whether on eBay or any other platforms for that matter. So there's no days off. <laughs> this is the one thing uh, I've come to notice, obviously. And when I say that, it's not like that I'm grinding 24-7. However, it feels that way. Uh, over the weekend, I feel like because the thing is with my eBay store, I leave it open. Even if I'm out of town, uh, I allow people to be able to purchase things. You know, I just have the away thing. Uh, so shipping gets, the you know, not delayed, but, you know, to let the pe- the buyers know that, you know, I'll, I'm out of town. I'll, I'll ship things as soon as I get back. However, I allow them to make offers. I allow them to purchase things, to ask me questions. And that's, you know, the one thing that I do very well and I, any of my followers or anybody who's you know purchased cards from me whether on ebay or anywhere else i respond as fast as i can uh, i do the best i can i try to uh, respond to everyone and everything and i feel like sometimes uh because obviously having the ebay app on your phone and, and everything it uh you're glued to it man and especially when you're getting questions offers left and right you know my wife the other day she's like dude you're on the phone freaking all the fucking time. It's like, oh, I get that, honey. So my, my thing is, you know, I, I, I've, I've come to realize that when it's family time, I put the shit down and I put the phone down for an hour, two hours, you know, whatever the case may be. So I give them my wholehearted, dedicated time. Uh, however, like I said, this is the one thing you I, I want people to realize is that I'm always responding to bids, offers. I'm always responding to questions. And um, to me, that is pure customer service. I feel like if I ask someone about a specific car, if I'm looking to buy, I hope they respond to me as soon as possible. If I give them an offer, I would like, in this is the thing, in my viewpoint, if somebody gives me an offer, that means they're right then and there looking at my card, they're looking at whatever or, or, or product inventory that I have, and they are interested instantly. So if that is the case, I try to respond instantly. So, you know, that, I feel like that gives me, I wouldn't say a step above, but I feel like that helps my, uh, whether you can call it closing rate, I hate that sales term shit, but I guess it, it helps my sales aspect of that because I feel like, hey, I res- you know, I, I respect them being interested in my, you know, item. So I respect their time to, to send me an offer that I'm going to respond as soon as possible. To me, and this is what I, I, I try to implement is that the store, the eBay store is like a storefront. So if they come into my store, if it was, you know, if I had a physical location, which hopefully down the future, I, I would love to one day, but they give me an offer right then and there is the same thing as an eBay store. That's how I, I, I portray it as. So if they come to my store and they give me an offer in person, they want to, they're not waiting to, till tomorrow for me to let me get back to you, come back tomorrow to the store. Right? So that's what I've, at least my goal is to respond to everybody as soon as possible. My thing is actually try to respond within the hour on any offers at all, any offers at all, any questions I try to do within the hour, within two hours. I try to respond uh, instantaneously if I can. So my thing is, you know, I, I try to keep an eye out for all those things. And that's what I say. It's, it's, you're never off. You're always working. At least I feel that way. So, and it's a good thing. Uh, I like it, you know, and, and yes, this is the one thing I've also noticed over the weekend or the past couple of weeks or whatever you can make say fucking low ballers. It's, it is what it is guys. So this is the thing you're going to get low ball, like a mofo. So my thing is do set your limit. When I say that is like like the offer limit, so you don't have to deal with the the low ballers if you don't want to deal with that. Now, I usually don't put a limit on all my lower end cards, raw cards. Uh, I usually don't put any type of limit when the offers comes, and that's because you know what? If it's a card that's been sitting for a year, and even if it's at fifty percent, they give me an offer, I may just move it. I may just like go ahead. And the thing is, if a, if if I set a limit. Let's just say last year, because maybe a certain player was hot. What if this year they're not so hot? 
Now, if I set that limit, you think anybody's going to be able to give it an offer? It's going to get automatic declined. So that's why, you know, for those low end. So that's why, and I might be willing to move that car just for half the cost or whatever, or at cost, or even at a loss just to move it. So that's why my thoughts are, my recommendation from, from what I've seen is that I, any low end raw cars or anything like that, don't put any, you know, stipulations on the limits of, of, of the offers. Uh, that way, like I said, you can, uh, make sure if you're looking to move a car, someone gives you a low ball offer, you might just take it. But now, when it comes to like the higher end slabs or medium or mid slabs, things like that, I try to give uh, at least a bare minimum. And that's because you put a little bit more, in, you know, uh, I guess you can say upfront cost into that specific item. Whether you send it into grade, whether you purchase that raw car for a higher uh, amount and then sent it into grade. So those those items, I will put a minimum in regards to the offer. And it's still pretty low in my eyes. I still put it pretty darn low, uh, you know, just to have a starting ground to work with, I feel like. Um, and you know, it is, and, and the thing is, people who get offended by low balls or or all that stuff, you know what? Raise the shit. Simple as that, guys. And if you don't have to deal with the low ball offers, you may never move your freaking card either. So you got to keep that in mind. So you got to find that fine line. It's a fine line, guys. So that's what I've noticed. Uh, I did get a little. My thing is, you know, the the people who are low balling, I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the best car for the lowest amount possible. I wholeheartedly understand that, but I wish others would also uh, understand that, you know, as a seller, they also, whether they're trying to make a little bit of profit, they're trying to make their time worth it, you know, by selling that. So at least respect that. I think both ways we guys can respect each other is a good thing. And then one other thing feedback on on ebay and stuff I, I don't know if a lot of buyers realize it it goes a long way when you leave a good feedback uh and also you leave a negative feedback so this is my thing i got a few well not a few i got one negative feedback which i got returned they got re, you know reversed uh because it had nothing to do with me it was the it was the shipping pro it was the united states postal service so i'm not trying to knock on them but for, for whatever reason, I usually don't have that issue, but uh, there was one out of, I don't know how many hundreds of cars I've sent, but they supposedly said it was delivered and they never received their card. So whether my thoughts are from all the orders I've sent and everything, if the United States Postal Service says it's been delivered, it's been delivered. Now, whether it's to the right location, whether it's the right box, whether it gotten somebody else accidentally taking it that has never been you know that's not technically the seller's fault but we will take the blame. I, I will take the you know i will take the hit if that is the case uh however to leave a negative feedback due to you know the shipping issue you know it hurts the the seller i was grateful that the buyer i think they uh came to the senses because you know i i reached out to them and i responded you know i would like that reverse because it it's not my fault. It's the, you know, the post office fault in that sense. And you can see by my feedback that I have tremendous good feedback. And it's not like I'm just going to not send that card to you or send an empty envelope or, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where uh, as a buyer, I think we should be well aware of that. Okay. By yes, I understand if you did not receive your card or receive a damaged card, reach out to the buyer, seller, reach out to me. The, I want to say 99.9% .9 of the time, the seller would make it right, especially on eBay when they want to build a good, sustainable business. They're going to do whatever it takes to try to, you know, within their means, obviously, to, to make it right for the buyer. So before you just leave a negative feedback, guys, please reach out to the seller. I highly recommend that. You never know. They may even be able to throw something in for you. It's just one of those things where they want to keep this, you know, sustainable business and keep that reputation, but they also want to, you know, make sure that you're happy with your product. At least I do. You know, that's how I feel. So, uh, end of the day, it, it, you know, remember every feedback, positive, negative, neutral, all that stuff, it affects their business. That affects everybody. It affects everybody. So just to kind of, you know, just, just be weary of that if you're a buyer on eBay. I'm just venting a little bit. But other than that, guys, I just thought I'd freaking, uh, uh, you know, a little do a check-in with y'all guys. So other than that, man, if you guys like this shit, oh, don't forget, check out the store right here, eBay, my, at mypop underscore cards, or just check me out whatnot. Hopefully, I'll be able to do some more shows in the coming weeks. So other than that, guys, if you like this shit, subscribe. <laughs>